Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Rambeard, and today I'd like to talk to you about Bud Nadrak and Grifter, starting off with the latter. Grifter is a sneaky troll tradesman who starts off his trading life in Shatrath, where he tries to sell amulets. With an abundance of sweet talk, he tries to trick you into buying his marvelous necklaces. Some of them even give you special powers, like the ability to swim. This scammy way of trading did not go unnoticed and he was exiled out of the city. He would ask people that passed by him if his stall was still okay, but you could still buy his wares from him. Then at some point, Suleiman was rediscovered, and for some reason Grifter was accepted back into Shatrath once more. With this, he also sold a new item, a hula girl doll, necessary in crafting the level 70 epic mount engineers can make. Reunited with his stall, he also gives us a quest, but more on that later. As of the Cataclysm, Grifter got a feel for traveling, as he could from then on be seen in the storm Stormwind Harbour, as well as at the Darkmoon Fair, ever selling his wares. In Mist of Pandaria, he even travelled all the way to Kunlai Summit, but only in Wallace of Draenor does he play a real role again. He now sells a variety of transmog items and a rogue-specific toy in exchange for dingy iron coins. Only rogues that have acquired the secretive whistle can summon him, however. Sneakily, he lives on. For now. Now, back to that quest that Grifta gives us in Shatrath. He tells us that he knows about an explorer, a treasure hunter, so to say, by the name of Bud Nedrak. He tells us that we should go and find him if we're interested in gold, and that we should bring him a note while we're at it. The note Grifter gives us to bring to Bud reads, Listen up, Bud. This be the last full ascend till you pay me all you be owning. No more Stalin. Grifter. Apparently, Bud has been using adventurers to do his dirty work, and has a bit of a thing going on with Grifter. Nonetheless, we go to Bud, who thinks his best odds of finding treasure lay at Zulaman. He has a camp set up near Zulaman with his crew, including Samir, Adara, and MacPherson. We arrive and he asks us to get a pieces of a treasure map for him. Through these quests we learn that Bud previously sent adventurers into Zulaman, but that they did not survive. We also discover that Bud is a bit full of himself, praising his own adventuring quite a lot. We manage to find the missing map parts and bring them to Bud, who praises us this time for our good work. Next up, he asks us to take care of this Hexlord fellow, telling us that he should be one of the older and weaker trolls. Boy was he wrong. The Hexlord puts up a hell of a fight, not going down easily. When we return to Bud, however, he acts all annoyed, trying to make us feel like we didn't do anything. He pretty much sends us away, going for the treasure himself, but we're not so easily taken care of. We go into Suleiman and kill last boss, taking the treasure for ourselves. We take the blood of Sul Jin and bring it to Bud, showing off our accomplishment without needing his help. He gasps at the sight of this artifact, but quickly gets himself together. He takes it for himself, tells us he could have done it himself, and tells us to leave again. He throws the vial into a burning building as he thinks this will unlock treasure for himself. However, as he does so, he gets lifted up into the air. Troll spirits pull him into the burning building and he yells, Ah, this was all player's name. Idea. Some of my best friends are forest trolls, trying to put the blame on us. He gets out alive, but he is no longer the same. The troll spirits left him with a broken mind and he stays out of any adventuring for a good while. In Wrath of the Lich King, we can find him once more going off on an adventure in the Grizzly Hills. Only now does the state of his mind become clear, however. He's gone insane, and for now he thinks that he's a troll, wearing a troll mask and all. His crew did not abandon him, however, and Samir asks us to go and capture an ice troll with the help of Bud, but thinks he can play tag with the ice trolls by hitting them from behind with a frying pan. So he still is useful, just insane. Aside from this little rendezvous, we don't see him again in Northrend, probably for the best. His adventuring never stops though, as he and his crew own a boat. This particular boat is the mercenary ship that brings us to Vashir, right after the cataclysm hits. Some years behind the wheel and boy is Bud happy to be sailing. We hear the crew's voices for the first time and although Max sounds rather ratnecky, Bud absolutely does not. Ahoy! I'm sailing! Out on a boat! Even though Bert went insane, some of his brain is still the same, and so is his greed for gold. As he sees something shining in the water, he jumps off the ship. Ooh, shiny! And his crew considers him dead. When we later find him, however, he seems to be very much alive, as he's found a breathing head, as he likes to call it. He tells us about some treasure he thinks is near, that is being guarded by the great shark Nas. The quest line, with obvious Jaws references, leads us to kill the great shark in the quest. Dun 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 dun, and Bud takes the treasure. The treasure is cursed, however, and Bud's turned into a skeleton. We remove the curse by breaking all the treasure and leave him. He bids us farewell and goes on to look for treasure in a whole other place. Quite the opposite of Fashir, to be honest. Namely, he and his crew make their way to the desert land of Uldum, where they search for treasure once more. We accompany him and his crew into Uldum and pretty much immediately get captured. When breaking out of captivity, we see that yet another part of Bud's brain is still intact. As he comes up with the escape plan, we disguise ourselves as Tulvir and manage to get away without being noticed. All of this experience 
exploring, leaves Bud quite tired though, so he takes a step down, not making an appearance in the rest of the Cataclysm expansion and the Mist of Pandaria expansion. In a lot of the Draenor, however, he makes us do some dirty work yet again, sending us to get some shinies from the Iron Docks as an end quest. All of them that. Bud and his crew go unnoticed, but maybe we will see them again in some future content. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day and goodbye.